first game, by the way, uh, today for them as well in this park. Uh, interesting to see how this unfolds. And yeah, they've been on the road every game so far yep. this season in their league campaign. Off of that 2-0-0 start, they're unbeaten in their last 16 going back to last year. Union Omaha, they're in the white from left to right. El Paso Locomotive in the blue from right to left here on a beautiful day at Warner Park in Papillion, Nebraska. The referee is Asad Omanovich in the red as he gets his final stretches in before he sends us on our way. El Paso has never won an Open Cup match. Going back to their first year playing in 2019, they've lost their first game each time. Oma has been on some special runs. They're looking to get that on the way again. And we're underway. No, we'll do it again. Somebody messed up on the kickoff, and we'll have to do it a second time. A little bit too early from yeah, the, the Omaha teammates. Correct. I mean, they're trying to set. The, look at this. There's five guys just <laughs> sprinting towards it. First ball, important. That sets the tone for for both teams. And now we're officially underway. Become part of that attacking force. Finally, Pascal goes long from the goal kick, and look at this. It almost heals a chance to the end line. Now the shot just wide of the far post. Javier Navarez latches onto it. Uh, El Paso last year for this fixture. Yeah, this is sophisticated lefty, small, mobile, always with his head up. Dolabella. All the way across from Dolabella. Headed away by Dolan Meyer. Big center back for El Paso. Joined last summer and started the last 10 games of the season. Became a mainstay for them. He was drafted by LAFC, the very last pick of the draft last year. Over the top, it's flicked on by Ekhoff and saved by Pascal. It just kept floating and floating and misread by that El Paso back line. Really makes it uncomfortable for an Alvaro, for a Nevarez, for a Heinz. Jerome off the volley, oh. uh, just over the bar. And I'm telling you, Joe, we talked about set pieces. I saw them beat Des Moines Menace, Chicago Fire, Northern Colorado Hailstorm. And ultimately lose to Sporting Kansas City in the quarterfinal. Lost 6-0 in that quarterfinal. They went on quite the run. Union Omaha, last year they were eliminated after one win. They went on the road and played St. Louis City and a record crowd in St. Louis for Open Cup. They have had their fair share of Open Cup success in their young history. I'm so impressed. If I, if I look at this, this, this home team right now, Gallardo, Righty coming inside from the left side as well, so they play with inverted wingers. Slip through now for Gomez. Saved by Pascal. Didn't have much of an angle there, but still made it dangerous. Yeah. Navarez does strike it on the ground, and it's just wide. Rashid knew who hasn't been tested yet. When he is tested, he's one of the best around. That's well, Nick Hines. Overlap was feverish from Alfaro. There he is. Alfaro threads it ahead. Hines continued his run to the back post, and it's saved by Nuhu off the line. To that brilliant little through ball. Even better ball across the goal mouth, and done. This is a big time save, by the way. The big thing for me as a head coach. And Casciato just got the thumbs up, it seems, from the trainer. And Master Antonio can go back in. Try from distance by Calvillo. And Nuhu had it covered, pulled his hands out of the way at the last moment. Rifle and overpower. You know, by the way, he's not taking the corner. That surprises me right now. It is Rivas through the wall. Shot for handball given. It's a penalty to make matters worse now for Union Omaha. They concede the free kick. The wall comes apart. The ball is handled, and now it's a penalty. Yellow card to Norte Norte. This is a nightmare end of the half for Omaha that could be made worse if El Paso converts. Yeah, and it starts all by the great run of uh, Navarez again that gets pulled down. First yellow, then you get Gomez with the yellow, and, and I'm telling you, that's the right call, Joe. Absolutely played that with his uh, with his hand, Jerome, or sorry, Norton. And you could claim my arm was next to my uh, body, but if you move that body and that arm in the direction of the, the ball, it's a 100% penalty. And again, what a unique opportunity for one of the players that we said to look out for. The El Salvadorian international, Mr. Armando Moreno. Nine minutes of stoppage time tacked on. Moreno against Nuhu. Three goals in five games this year for Moreno. It's Moreno skying it over the bar. Rivas looking for Moshabane, headed away by Mastrantonio. 
Calvillo slips it through, flag goes up, denying Moreno the opening goal. Very fine margin, but flag goes up. A lot of contact, Joe. A lot of bodies go down, always complaining, referee not giving anything. Some space here to send one. Goal ward is just wide. Nine minutes come and gone. Opportunities both ways. More clear cut for El Paso. But it looks like we're going to head into this break scoreless, but not before another yellow card. It's Nick Hines who picks up a yellow card here. Arguing with the referee. Yeah, there's just a lot of jostling going on, and the more set pieces come in, the more aggressive that defensive unit becomes, and the more daring the attackers become as well. So there's a lot of contact inside the 18-yard box as well. Great turn there, the give and go. Good turn by Gallardo, by the way, on his right peg. And actually, it comes, I think, actually of Alfaro's. And then the complain again, unnecessarily to the referee, just like Gomez, the yellow card. And there is the whistle to end half number one, a frantic half at times, but it finishes scoreless through 45 between Omaha and El Paso. We've got more to come here tonight. It almost looks like they are doing a, uh, a bit of a reversal right now, going direct from the kickoff as well. And we saw that from Omaha. They sent five guys forward and just the opening kick down. Here it is. Tremend FC or New York City FC too as well, but home teams normally in the 11 up on the road against uh, the Chicago Fire. So the away side slowly is working their way back into this game. Shabane will deliver the in-swinger toward that back post. The header, it's loose in front, and it's saved off the line again. That time by a defender. There's been two close calls on the line like that for El Paso. Fire with that far post, just towering above everybody. Again, in swinger with a left peg, going far post this time, finding a trailer coming right late. But then good intervention of the ball headed to trust the goal mark, which is the right thing to do to find the teammate maybe to slot that one home, but not come for, for Pasco. Gallardo goes for goal, it's headed over the bar by Navarez. I almost feel like, based on the amount of set pieces we've seen on both sides, that something will give or break sooner or later. Garay floats the corner. Header from Dylan is off target. Thought that he was getting his jersey tug. Remember, this match has been scoreless the entire way. That's with a penalty that we saw for El Paso. 45th minute, skied over the bar. You wonder how different this game might have been. Armando Moreno converted that opportunity. When teams have been forced to open up a bit more. Would we have seen maybe another goal or two either way? Instead, it's been in this deadlock. Yeah, you, you say now going to penalties <laughs> would be pretty uh, pretty good for a team that's you're right down a man. And there's a whistle to end the first 90. All the way across here. Moment to maybe take the lead right away. An extra time for Omaha as Almesh puts it off frame. Ryan Jiba again. It's set for the in swinger. Jiba drives it loose in front. Battle ensues on the line. It's deflected over the bar. That was the best opportunity. There's a connection right there. Good pull in, bounces. And then Pasquale comes up with an incredible save, by the way makes himself big, almost like a hockey goalkeeper, comes over his leg as well. And That was after being dismantled by Louisville. They came from behind twice in the match against Chattanooga Red Wolves, and they now lead in the 108th minute, 3-2 to two for the first time today. So maybe El Paso can try and find that same sort of spark here. Try from distance, a good dipping ball, and saved by Nuhu. First time he's had to make a stop in a long time. Awkward hop it took in front of him. And he rolls it out quickly to ignite the attack with Jiba. Almesh. First 15 minutes of extra time have come and gone. We wait the whistle or any additional time. Two minutes tacked on here. And 
when called upon, Joe, both goalkeepers have come on big or at least have not made mistakes. That's why his game is at zeros. Lack of quality chances, and if there's some, goalkeepers stand to. Almesh trying to create another quality opportunity. Almesh shoots it. It took a deflection on the way through. Adam Almesh serves it. Knapp heads it centrally. Lined up by Jerome. And not quite the contact he made in the first half on the volley. That brings us to the end of the first extra time. We've got 15 more minutes here at Warner Park. Ryan Jiba comes off for Rodriguez. And away we go in the second extra time. They really had something special every year since they've been a club. They made the League One final in 2020 in their inaugural season. They won the trophy in 2021. They made the Open Cup quarterfinal in 2022. Now it's Almesh in behind. Adam Almesh over the bar. 45 plus one, skying that penalty effort. Now it's Garay from the corner. Can El Paso steal it now on a set piece? Not like that. I'm shocked that the, neither team has changed up their set pieces. Garay, second crack at it. Better service this time. Loose in front and saved by Nuhu. It was a slip from Gonzalo Palua. His pride might be hurting as much as he is now as he gets back to his feet. Finally, and jogs back down the field. Great look. Fell perfectly for him as well. Just think of what it could do for a team who's winless. Five losses, one draw to begin the year in USL Championship El Paso. Even if it's not pretty, even if it's a late goal here, or if it's in penalties, just what it does to the mind to have that win. On the flip side, what it does to the psyche if against the lower division side, you can't score, you can't win in penalties, you lose again, you taste that defeat again after a winless start in six, and then you, oh, by the way, have to go up against the Tampa Bay Rowdies, one of the top teams in the Eastern Conference this weekend, and it could snowball. Now it's Almesh cutting back. Adam Almesh going for goal and saved by Pascal. It's really the next thing to shape up for this Omaha side as an organization. They've come in, they've had their success in League One and in Open Cup, making the quarterfinal two years ago. Now can they start supplying from beneath with their academy here in Nebraska? Flipped over the top, Dillon. Justin Dillon waits for some help, puts it in front, saved by Nuhu, still kept out on the second effort. Rasheed Nuhu has been inactive for about an hour in this one, but he made the big save when it mattered, and now Omaha's off to the races. Cutting inside, looking for a lane to shoot, there it is, it's saved by Pascal. Flicked on, and out of play. <laughs> After 118 minutes, sometimes mental fog gets to you. And now the whistle is blown. We are headed to penalties here at Warner Park. Union Omaha, El Paso Locomotive will decide it from kicks from 12 yards out. Here we go to get us underway in penalties. Gallardo against Pascal. Long delay from Gallardo. Here he is, Gallardo converts. First time that the ball has hit the back of the net tonight. Yeah, when you're tired, and obviously it's, it's a huge first kick, Gallardo really waits for Pascual to make that move and it goes to the opposite side well take a penalty after a hard fought game when you're physically and mentally exhausted don't change anything that you normally would do when you take penalties in practice or in games as well you got two of the best stepping up right now in Cavillo as well could a goalkeeper make a difference Joe but she knew who has shown a propensity for saving penalties in league one over the last couple of years Calvillo stares him down. One of the bedrock pieces for El Paso is Calvillo off the post and in. New guest right, gambled right as well, but that's a well-placed, with good pace as well, 
no chance knew you're right inside of the post both players picked their spots really well under tough circumstances good start for both one one through one and now it's luca master antonio center back stepping up he's been with omaha for two seasons now yeah, him, four goals in his career. Yeah, him and Yuma on both sides were instrumental, obviously, in terms of organization. Huge moment for the center back. Master Antonio, a little skip step, and Master Antonio tucks it away with power beyond the outstretched hand of a guessing correctly Ramon Pascal, pumping up the crowd. It's two to one. Yeah, regardless if a goalkeeper guesses right, if you go with pace, Joe, and you go sight netting, which has happened here, it's very hard. I don't care who you are to get that one. Bends away from the goalkeeper, good pace, also good height, not a high, hard for a goalkeeper to get through. So far, well taken PKs, but the pressure will continue to mount. Tony Alfaro steps up now, the 30-year-old from Mexico. He's bounced around his career between USL and MLS. Time with Seattle Sounders, DC United, NYCFC, LA Galaxy. And we'll go to the center. Tony Alfaro against Rashid Nuhu. He sent the keeper the wrong way. 2-2. Two -two. Both teams perfect so far. Yeah, calm and composed. Lefty. That's the little stutter step. Sends, as you said, Nuhu the wrong way. Slots it home with the inside of his foot. Well taken. Now it's Adam Almesh, who made a difference in this game ever since he subbed on in the late stages of the second half. Created a lot of opportunities for Omaha. A couple of near winners that were produced all because of him for Omaha. Now he has his chance on the penalty against Pascal Almesh. It's off of Pascal and in. He guessed right. He's got a piece of it, but it still ricochets in. The <laughs> shoelaces with power picked his spot regardless where the goalkeeper was going. Pasquale gets a piece of it. Actually, was trying to go straight down the middle. Pasquale goes, gets an arm up, gets a piece of it as well. If he just stands there, Joe, it hits him in the chest, but that's easier said than done. I would not guess if I was a goalkeeper. I, I think one out of five, if I stay, I will save. Gonzalo Palua now steps up. Another substitute. He missed a great chance at the end of 120. Palua saved by Nuhu. Finally, somebody blinks. I feel bad for the substitute. He also had a great opportunity. Remember the OT when he couldn't really connect about five or six yards out. Opens up very wide right now. That's that's long distance call. Nuhu just saw that all the way and if you go into your substitutes joe normally those are not the guys that are accustomed to taking penalties as well youth plays a role he's never been in this situation on the other hand dolabella has been there and done that can he consolidate the advantage now in the fourth round dolabella again tucks it away calmly for omaha and they're on the break el paso must score to keep it going up several times and how's the composure to send Pasquale one way and goes the other way again well or make for Omaha and the Owls would win can they do it here Dylan against new who and it's in for Dylan so it puts the pressure back on Omaha to convert here the substitute stepping up of all people Mark Bronick he subbed up Bronick against Pascal a deep breath from the 17 year old Mark Bronick sends Omaha to the round of 32. The Open Cup magic is alive in Nebraska again. Instances tonight. Again, a look back at the penalty for Bronick as he gives them the victory. Just brilliant. Inside of the foot. Goes away also from Pasquale. Hits the side netting with pace and said again. You go side netting, it's almost impossible for any goalkeeper, even if he gets his ride for a 17-year-old, 